This is the voltage regulator, or one of many, I replaced in my 63 Ford Galaxy. These things here would last a little while, then they would overcharge. And no matter what I did to clean the contacts or whatever from sticking, they would always overcharge. So, what I did is this. In my 1963 Ford Galaxy, I put bucket seats in it. The original seat was pretty bad. And this was a console. This is what's left of it. This was the console. And I had a voltmeter. This is what's left of the voltmeter, too. Uh, burglar alarm is the key for the burglar alarm. And a field ballast. What I was would do when I'd take a trip to West Virginia or any big long trip on the highway, it should overcharge after about a half hour, 45 minutes on the road, and the voltage would start climbing and cook the battery up. All brown, uh, you know, uh, electrolyte, and it would just be literally ruined. So I said, the hell with this, I'm going to build myself a, a field ballast. Now I don't have the field ballast that was under the hood in a Bud Mini box, similar to this one. The car has long since went to the junkyard, unfortunately. This is what's left of it, of the console that I built. Stripped out as years went on, as I needed things. What would happen is, when the voltage got up to, oh, there's my little mark there. When it got up to 15 volts, she was okay. She started going over that. I would flip this switch and then kick the fuel ballast. Well, the fuel ballast would be in going down and out going up. So it would kick it in and then it would reduce the charge, putting a, a big heavy 20 watt resistor in series with the field of the alternator. So I'd have to monitor this as I'm driving along, just glance down at it. When I find that the charge goes down to around uh, 13 volts or so, then I'd just kick the ballast out. You know, I'd flip the switch and kick the ballast out so that it could start charging again. So I'd have to keep doing this. So kind of like a mechanical voltage regulator, if you would. Uh, this was for my CB. This was a key to mic on all the time, or intermittently to the talk because I had a power mic. This is my low-level gas gauge. It was a, a little unit I got from Olsen Electronics. All that's left of it now is the uh, indicator. The whole thing is gone years ago. This was my on-the-air light when I keyed my CB transmitter. This was the jack for my hand mic because I had a dash mic also built into the dash which used a power amp from um, I can't recall the power mics that we used back then but anyways uh, it was can't remember it. But anyways, that's my CB days back in the 70s, which I care to forget about. This was the gain. I took the power mic guts and put them in this Bud Mini box here, and they're probably still in there. And I took the volume control, added the volume control here for the gain of the power mic. And that was cost for the dash. So that was the gain for the dash mic, which was essentially a, a CB power mic. And I had a switch to go from the hand mic to the dash mic. And this was the battery indicator for the battery for the power mic, which again was inside this case. Quite an elaborate little rig, if I do say so myself. But that's what I had. And back in the days when I used to travel to Wheeling, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Dutch country, and back in my single days when I was full of vim and vigor.